okay so welcome to another session another video on the ic channel and today is an important topic which we are going to discuss as we all know those who are working in the intensive care unit or critical care department or the emergency they use an iv mask and bipap machine so there are many sessions on how to you operate a bipap machine how to use an iv settings on the ventilator it is fine but today these four people are with us with me is abhishek with me is kushal with me is kapil and nadim so they are from a uh, company which manufactures an iv mask and they came here for certain visit and certain other work so fortunately i uh, stumble upon them and they i requested them to demonstrate the different parts of the niv mask because we focus most of the focus is on the machine operation but we forget the important points regarding the mask and the instruments and the attachments which we use with the bipap machine and on ventilator so what we'll do the structure of this next 15 minutes will be we'll understand what are the different parts of the niv mask then different different attachments and uh, some simple common troubleshoots which we have in the icu and how to manage it so now i'll focus the camera a little uh, bring the camera a little before so i may not be visible but you can uh, see the mask and the person explaining it so okay abhishek so so can you tell me what are the basic parts of an niv mask uh, sure. which we use huh. sure sir so when we talk about niv mask hmm. so the few components that visibly that i can show you as hmm. first is your elbow hmm. so this is through which you are getting you are connecting them to your bipap tubing hmm. so the second component is your frame hmm. the third component is your cushion so this is the part that is touching your patient's face hmm. third thing is your forehead pad so this rests on your patient's forehead these are certain supplemental ports for your supplemental oxygen if you can see them okay. these ones okay. along with certain these are the clips okay. so that the patient can be quickly re uh, removed from the mask and can be connected as quickly third is your headgear so these are the com key components so also in a bipap if you are specifically talking there is a component within this elbow this so this is the elbow yeah, yeah. this is the elbow okay. this is the elbow this component right here and if you can see this properly so when i put my pen in you can see something is blocking the expiratory port yeah so this is your anti asphyxia valve so the purpose of this is in case of a power cut so the patient has adequate expiratory ports through which they can easily inhale and exhale in case of a power cut okay so these are the basic parts of the mask this is cushion this is the main yeah. attachment gear gear head gear and all these things now tell me uh, regarding um, uh, what are the difference between there are two type of masks which we always use uh, the term in the icus vented niv mask and non vented niv mask so what is the basic difference between a vented mask and non vented mask sure sir so the key difference between the two so this was this one is your vented mask which you most commonly which is mostly used with your huh. bipap as well as your cpap hmm. this one is a non vented one so the biggest uh, this is used with your ventilator so the biggest difference between the two is one is having an expiratory port it is always used with your cpap and bipap and most commonly and only it can be connected with a single limb tubing okay. it cannot be connected with a dual double limb tubing on the contrary in a bi and on a ventilator the machine is doing the breathing uh, both inhalation and exhalation for the patient so we do not so we have to make sure there is no leak so non vented has no leak ports and is only connected to a double limb tubing so in a simple way if i tell you on an iv we need oxygenation and we need ventilation ventilation means wash out of the co2 usually it's used in ccf patient or in the copd patient so you want the oxygen to be inhaled and carbon dioxide to, to be, be exhaled yes yeah. so in a in a in a bipap machine small machine which is there on which you are using it so there should be a port so that when the patient exhales the co2 should come out so in that case the vent there is a vent in the uh, elbow of the mask that's why we call it as a vented niv mask so vented mask should be used with a bipap machine on the contrary when you put the patient on ventilator attach the with a niv uh, mesh, I means ventilator and iv mode and you connect that mask to the patient the expiratory co2 goes through the ventilator circuit yes. so in that we cannot provide a vent 
if we provide a vent in that and iv mask there will be a leakage of the air and the ventilator will not be able to perform uh, adequately so in that the oxygen goes to the one limb and it comes out to the other limb there is no vent but there are tubing so that's why on bipap machine you use single tubing because you are providing oxygen you can show it Yes. You, are, you are providing single uh, limb because the oxygen goes to this and the CO2 exhale through the vent. But on NIV mask which is put on the ventilator, attached to the ventilator, the oxygen goes to one limb and CO2 comes out to the other, from the other limb, there is no vent. Can you demonstrate this? Sure. So, if, so this is our ventilator circuit and this is our non-vented. Hmm. So in case if there is any confusion, so there are some safety checks built into the system as well. So the non-vented elbow will on, only connect to the dual limb circuit. So in case I try to connect it to a single limb. Mm, single limb. Okay. So this is also you can see this is a blue color. So the blue color elbow is usually non-vented one and the vented one usually comes as transparent. transparent so this is usually a color coding which is there but obviously you can see that yeah. there is a valve in it this is vented and this there is no valve in this no valve in this this is non vented so this will not connect to a single tubing so if i try to connect it it will not connect not co it will only get connected to double tubing yes. while this single uh, vented uh, elbow will connect to a single tube and this will go to the bipap machine and the connection from here will go to the ventilator circuit, it will not connect connected. Okay, so so this is the difference between a vented uh, mask and an event. So for your embrace, if you are using a BiPAP machine, you should use a vented mask. If you are using a NIV mode on a ventilator, then you should use a non-vented NIV. Yes. So that's the difference that you, you should understand. So that's why if you have a patient on ventilator and you are using an NIV mode and now, now it has been told that shift the patient to a BiPAP machine, you should change the mask also. Yes. Okay. Okay. So in the layman language, you can also say that like vent is that from the air comes out. Okay. And uh, if you if you if you if you talk like this, like uh, there the AC vent, huh. AC vent is there, huh. it is coming, huh. right? So if there is no vent, the air will not come out. In a layman language, we can tell them like uh, vented is from the air comes out. Okay. Non vented, the air is done. Very nice, very yeah. nice. So. Uh, now uh, we have discovered we have jotted down the points so that we don't forget what we need to give you the information so we have vented non-vented we have tubings color and now uh, we can and think also of mention is the sometime you use to non-vented mask to a vented patient hmm. so sir, suddenly your machine the, the indicator co2 is uh, the higher side huh. so if you wrong side ki aap non-vented mask you use to in ventilator side means if we use a vented mask on ventilator so there will be leakage yes sir. yes there will be leakage of the co2 CO. and also of the oxygenation yes sir. it will not provide oxygenation yes. because there will be leak of yes. the air right. so the ventilator will start always give a leakage alarm leakage alarm on that yes sir okay. it will constantly raise an alarm alerting both the medical practitioner that there something is incorrect because okay. leakage is not there on yeah. the bottom which is co2 retention will be there yes Okay, so now can you uh, tell me about these different types of elbows, uh, which are sure, the previous one, the traditional one, and the newer one which you have? So, so, you, so, so this is the most common uh, form of mask that you will see. So, these are the masks which have been using since the inception of the NIV, uh, since the inception of these masks. Okay. So now these things, now a lot of, since COVID we have realized there are a lot of factors that also need to be changed in the existing mask. Mm. So when we talk about any medical intervention of in form of any aerosol therapy or doing any bronchoscopy as well, we currently do not have any facility of doing any medical intervention on these masks. Mm -hmm. So currently when we let's say I want to do some sort of aerosol therapy, currently we are disconnecting the patient from the pressure support ventilation to add a T unit. T piece which is the... Yes sir. So from which we do nebulization. Mm -hmm. So the downside is you have to remove the patient from their pressure support ventilation to do that to do their medication. Mm. Now the another thing is since the expiratory port is placed ahead of the nebulization port, mm. so when the CPAP is sending the pressure, the most of the drug is being wasted through the expiratory port. Okay. In a closed loop, when we talk about a dual limb, the maximum drug that is getting to the patient is around seven percent. Mm. So in case of a bypass with the expiratory port open, that seven percent further drops down. Okay. So, when we talk about the new products, these are the, these are the newer uh, elbows which have come. Ah. 
so the one of the key benefits of these can you just show me the elbow first before attaching sure okay. so can we have a look on that so these are these are the newer ones can you just explain sure sir. Huh. so okay. sir, these are front of the camera yeah. huh. So okay. the, these elbows, mm. so one of the key things, the biggest difference that you will see between the new, new one and the old one is mm. earlier the patient was exhaling onto the both medical uh, providers. Mm. So in case of COVID or any infectious disease, the patient is directly exhaling onto the healthcare mm. providers. So as it is very important to keep our staff safe as well. So the new generation masks have an expiratory port which is oriented towards the patient itself so, so rather his than, own secretions yeah so rather than exhaling on to you they are exhaling on to themselves mm. the uh, port at the top means it, it will not harm them because they are already the having, their, uh, having their own secretions yes. so that's a safety mechanism like, like we put a handkerchief or yes, we yes, cough yes. like that so it will not spread to other person even their relatives and family members which are yes. there yes sometimes you have a very mm. infected patient ah, okay. so first the, uh, the nursing staff go to and the nervous system to the pore size the, for the patient. So it is a safety mechanism for not only for healthcare workers but also for the family members yes, and yes. Their children which are there with the patient yes, at yes, the sir. home itself. Yes, sir. So the, as the patient is already infected the secretions will go there itself and yes. so it will not affect. Okay. Hmm. So the other thing is the port cap that we have the port that is that is visible from the top is this is specifically used for your nebulization okay so it can so be this will get connected to the uh, patient to the NIV to the NIV. will connect it to the NIV one it okay. will look like, like this like, so this is connected like this yes. okay so now you have in this nebulization port yes sir. so the the idea behind this one was earlier the patient uh, hmm. huh. you can have it no issue huh. so earlier what we were having was a situation like this where when we were adding a T unit mm. so the drug was being carried over here and then it was being wasted through the expiratory pool mm. in this situation the first and foremost you don't need to add a T unit in this because the nebulization port is already placed between the patient and the expiratory port okay. so during inhalation your drug going to the patient improves mm. so that first most importantly you don't have to have to disconnect the patient from their pressure support why bed. this is important because at times the patient is on high peep somewhere on 8 9 and 10 and when we disconnect the circuit that peep effect has gone is, uh, gone and the LY start collapsing so you, you don't need to se have a separate means you need to disconnect or again re reinsert the tubings it, it is a continuous mechanism by which the loss of peep is minimal Mm. Additionally, sir, a lot of studies support the use of MDI mm. because again, the minimum aerosolization and deposition also is better. Mm. So that functionality is also available with these elbows, with the new masks that are coming in. Mm. So either the patient who is going at home mm. or let's say they don't require an aggressive form of treatment of minor. So you have the functionality of doing either of the both, either of the two. Mm. So when we sh uh, when we assemble all the key components, mm -hmm. the, our system looks something like this. Okay, thank you. So, so this is your mask. Uh, this is your uh, the modern the nebulization uh, port. Uh, and if we are not using any port, we have these caps mm -hmm. to close them. Okay. So to connect the tubing, mm -hmm. we are having this additional attachments, mm -hmm. these certain locks which can be clipped onto your single limb so, tubing. So uh, if we see this, this is the mask, this is your modern elbow, I think because of the wide, wide background it, it is not coming. But this is uh, your uh, nebulization thing and this is something which is going to the patient. And this is going to the patient, I think now it is clear. This is mask, this is your elbow, this is nebulization port, this is for MDI and this one is going towards the patient ventilator circuit. Yes sir, towards your bipap. Single. So uh, this is this will be your bipap because it's transparent and single tubing is going to connect it. It is not meant for uh, ventilator, ventilator circuit. So the vent here is at the bottom. The vent is here at, at the bottom stage. This is a vented, vented mask. Now, if we want to connect the same sort of uh, elbow on a ventilator, there, there, this will change? Yes, yes, yes sir. Sir. This, this, uh, we so this will change. This will change. So, so this will come by blue one, which will connect, get, will not connect to your single tubing. Can you show this? Sure, sir. Hmm. 
so why so for a, uh, on ventilator circuit this uh, low will change it will come to blue one which will have no vent but sir, as, as said, uh, said by sir this single connect. tubing will not get connected so if you want to connect your nebulization mm -hmm. the process is the the process is the same mm -hmm. you open the port cap mm -hmm. you connect it mm -hmm. and again you have a situation like this so you can. and then you have a dual limb circuit that is going on now then it will get connected and now you can mm -hmm. now as you can see these are called we call them butterfly locks mm -hmm. so what you can do is you can clip the tu oxygen tubing mm -hmm. to these okay Okay. So what it will do is, it will hold your nebulizer in, in place, mm. not allowing it to move. Mm. So your nebulizer stays upright, mm. so you are delivering drug. So this is the setup. Once on a... it is done, you can open it. If okay. you want to and again nebulize the patient, okay. you can okay. the then refill it and yeah. Okay. Right. So the, these are, uh, sir, additionally, sir, this was just a part of it. Additionally, some new elbows that, uh, new masks that are coming in have the functionality of even doing bronchoscopy. Okay. So when we talk about the NIV mask, yeah. so any respiratory patient that is coming and you want to mitigate those risks mm. associated, mm. so you can again use the nebulization port to give your bronchodilators. Okay. Along with doing your bronchoscopy, one is your oral port. This one is a, a standard mask, but there's a port at the bottom as well. Mm. So through which you can do your nasal bronchoscopy yeah, as well. Where is the port? So this one is available. But 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 we have uh, like we have is available over at the bottom as well. So for the risk associated with those certain procedures, which can be mitigated through these ones as well. So if you want to insert your bronchoscope, we recommend that you use the gel on your bron before entering. Okay. So uh, the idea is many times the patient is on IVM and we, do, we want to do a bronchoscopy but we can't remove the BiPAP yes. mask and IV mask. Yes. So yes, these, are, these the elbow can come in handy because of this uh, uh, bronchoscopy port is there by which if the patient is on BiPAP itself and we can go through the bronchoscope from here. Or, this is the ventilator mask. Sorry, sorry, an IV, an IV mask. Right? Yeah. So we can uh, go through the bronch bronchoscopy. Like we have the, uh, a bronchoscopy. Huh, same. Again, the transparent one for which is needs to be attached with a BiPAP machine and the blue one which will get attached to your ventilator circuit right. means double tubing, single tubing. This is non-vented, this is vented. So now, uh, Abhishek, we have understood the different parts of the mask. Uh, uh, anything specifically you want to tell you, you want to tell about the circuit or that's fine? Uh, the ventilator circuit, anything you want to specifically tell us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. Anything special in the circuit? So just a few note about the ventilator circuit which they have, uh, we can discuss that. Okay. So sir, these are your traditional ventilator circuits huh. which are used. Huh. So you need an HME, heat moisture exchange, hmm. so that when the patient is on a ventilator, so they are retaining that heat. Hmm. So usually traditionally what happens is your inspiratory pressure is coming to the patient hmm. and again if you want to do any sort of medical intervention right now the issue that arises is how do I deliver the drug without compromising my yeah, huh. okay. So traditionally what is done is traditionally what is done is the patient is removed from their pressure support ventilator to add a T unit hmm. in front of this. So one of the challenges that most people are facing in an ICU is during inhalation the drug is going to the patient but during exhalation most of the time the drug is going to your HME field. It will get deposited. Yes. It, will, it can block also. Yes, block all. So it can for very strongly reduce the ventilatory pressure that is coming to the patient. So you can see the ventilator is not performing as per expectation. Okay. Mm. So one additionally thing your inspiratory limb is from where the patient is getting their fresh air. So when we talk about an ARDS patient or patients having severe respiratory issues, so when we are adding attachments that adds to the dead space to the circuit. Okay. So in this situation, so the circuit that we have right now is, so the idea behind it is not to remove the patient from their mm. pressure support uh, ventilator when we are giving them any sort of okay. medical intervention. Okay. Mm. So in the inspiratory limb you have your nebulization input Port. okay so once once you collect it this specific attachment is called as a specific pingu valve mm. the idea is when you connect it only then it will open in your circuit okay so the idea is if you're let's say not nebulizing the circuit remains closed mm. providing a completely closed loop to the staff as well mm. so 
when you see this so once you have connected the nebulization port here yes. it starts working out in line right yes, okay. during your inhalation okay so earlier the drug which was being wasted in your exhalation phase hmm. is now being collected in your inspiratory reservoir okay. so no how it will get it was from here inhalation it is going to the patient then again yes sir. patient will exhale now then so, so we are coming to that point hmm. so earlier what was happening was since the nebulizer was placed in this position mm -hmm. that during exhalation all the drug was being sucked into your expiratory okay. so therefore it was being completely wasted okay in this situation so when during your exhalation phase the inspiratory limb is no longer active but the nebulizer is still working so your drug is getting accumulated in your inspiratory limb okay so when the inspiratory pressure is coming in that earlier which was completely being wasted is now optimized to give a better drug deposition to the patient okay also <coughs> dual mode hme so the purpose is when you are doing your let's say standard ventilation where you don't need to add anything it will operate like a standard circuit but the moment when we turn this knob 90 degrees the hme gets blocked and we are the bypass mode we are sending the drug okay so uh, it will not get deposit on the hme yeah, and yes, full sir. drug delivery yeah. to the patient yes, will be sir. there yes sir. but there is slight risk of humidification but it's for the transit so period only for those 20 or 25 minutes that you are doing very transit period yes okay so, so this is this this is the thing yes sir right. so you like this you see it on the we, if you have a hme filter now hme filter you okay. see it then you turn the so this is the thing this is hme filter and we now when we have blocked yes sir uh it comes to the different port so anyway this is a good attachment means as this is a ventilator circuit in which the nebulization port drug yes. delivery uh, can no be optimized and we can bypass hme filter for that yes. matter yes sir who who is on there doing they are connecting special nebulization after the hme and sometimes they have to remove the hme okay. mm -hmm. do the nebulization also So the biggest takeaway from this one is, sir, you are having 40% drug deposition improvement without having to remove the patient from the ventilator. So, in terms of healthcare system, we can have much better uh, patient outcomes in terms of have not having to disconnect them. Okay, so this was in. Uh, And because of this, this circuit will close from top to bottom, mm -hmm. so there will be no infection spread in the yes. closed circuit. Closed. So this is uh, this is some more attachment which we can uh, connect on the an IV also. and i we mask right. also yes, sir, yes, sir. and uh, also on the ventilator so that it performs very well in both the situations so like this this will be there so an i we mask hme and this one so this now we have discussed mostly about the bipap attachment selbo and the circuit if we want to attach to the patients now i have few three or four problems which i face regularly in the icu so one thing which is the most common is how to choose a correct mask Yes, because it's the uh, mm -hmm. correct side of the mask for the patient. Which okay. side of mask uh, should be there? So, for, as per my understanding, there are only three sizes, which yes, is available: small, medium, large. Yes. Just, just can you tell me which type of mask we should choose? So, so right in front of us right now, we have two sizes. This one is a small one. This one is a medium one. Mm. So. first thing is identifying which mask we are currently holding so in most cases you will find that the size is written at the bottom uh, you can see here uh, this is s is written here if you can see i think uh, in the in the photo camera uh, this yeah. is s is written and in this is at the bottom if you can see here it is written m so it is for medium so the general idea is sir first when you want to put on an niv mask you want to understand which size should i need to use so the general standard practice is first you put the mask the top portion should be touching your nasal bridge and the bottom should be between your lips and your chin mm. to have the best fitting best it fitting seal it should be in the middle portion mm. to have the best seal okay so this is medium one yeah Okay, so you can see the the bridge of the nose and it between the chin and the lower lip. Okay. So the idea is, so when you place it like this, the tension when you are tightening the mask to ensure a proper seal, there is no leak. So there are certain aspects to the NIV mask which prevent nasal abrasion, which is the most common issue that is present right now. So when you place it like this. Okay. So this is uh, this is the movement. You can see the movement. Right? Hmm. So what it does is what. So what it does is 
इट रिमूव द टेंशन फ्रॉम द नोज वाइल इंश्योरिंग अ प्रॉपर फेस तो द पेशेंट इज ऑल्सो मोर कम्फर्टेबल एंड द आई सी यू स्टाफ ऑल्सो हैज लेस्ट एडजस्टिंग द एन आई बी मार्क्स ठीक है ओके so we have i think the most most you universe medium size commonly medium size fits more or less uh, on all people right. in females i think smaller so one more, uh, smaller yeah. one yeah. is the better choice uh, so, according yes. to so most in most cases generally what we have seen is ki the medium mask is a universal size for most of the majority patient that are coming in hmm. so if whenever you are in doubt until and unless the patient is abnormally chubby or has a big by bigger face right. then you need to use medium medium one and most cases the females have a more smaller face compared to males so in that case we recommend mostly using small smaller face depends upon the from patient yes, to sir. patient right sir okay size so, also mention on packing okay for to so the size is mentioned on the packing but if you have a mask open up at the bottom there is written s m uh, large large, large so sir now the another problem which we face is the um, bruising which comes on the patient's forehead or nose uh, 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 by fitting this mask and using an eye mask for a longer time so is there a mechanism or is there something which we can can help to avoid this uh, yes. no nasal bruise or yes. pressure sores while using an eye yes so one of the key things is as a so we are cert an eye mask we have certain mechanisms of letting the person who is putting on the mask no that if they are tightening the mask a bit too much hmm. so there are certain if you can see these clips hmm. they are designed uh, bring with more yeah. so these are designed to break under certain tension okay so in case it is being excessively tightened these break so that will send as a message that it is being tightened more than that is required hmm. so it can be good as act as an indicator as well that they can loosen up so that the patient is also feeling more comfortable and the leak is also reduced okay so this is one thing anything any additional attachment one thing is there because the old age patient are there no, you can you come here your voice is not the so old age patients are there so hmm hmm old age patients are there so so for that for those patient we hmm. can use this nasal pad this is the nasal pad this is the silicone one so this is the silicone one which you are telling okay what it will do it just uh, show the abhishek so the idea behind this one is since the patient is on a let's say on a prolonged stay let's say 5 10 7 days so in that period when they are having a full face mask on the portion of this is no longer able to have a good air exchange so the issue that we have seen is these in older patients specifically the process of pressures or injuries is accelerated so to prevent so the those skin of this old the skin of the patient yeah yeah a bit loose as well so for those specifically those patients what we recommend is this hydrating gel pad so the idea behind this one is it is in a adhesive layer which can be removed so once it is being removed it can be placed on top of the patient from their again nasal bridge to this portion so what it will do is it acts like a hydrating gel so even if i put it on okay like this okay so what it will do is it will protect the patient give them hydrating like aloe vera gel you have so it will constantly mo- keep the skin moist and so that will reduce the chances of pressure for injury like this okay put there that will be okay ठीक है सो इट विल हेल्प टू रिड्यूस द प्रेशर सो यूजुअली दिस इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज वी फेस इन डेंटिस्ट या so that is one thing like if you are using correct mask mm. there will be no pressure so but the patients like old age patients the skin is very soft mm. so for those patient we can use this also there will be no pressure for on the nasal operation okay so one more problem uh, which is the commonest uh, problem is usually the patients which we have in intensive care where we use an iv mask na so we need to put nasogastric tube because we can't remove the mask to feed them so we use a ng tube feeding okay. but the ng tube tubing has to come out and the mask should be put above the face so is there a mechanism is there a something which we can help to prevent the leak yes sir. by the ng tube yes, and uh, which is hampering the niv very much true sir so so the, as, as you mentioned this is a very big the mm. uh, feedback that have received in the most icu mm. that whenever we try to do any sort of like when we insert the ng tube there is a significant trade off between the two essential things when we put pre- give preference to ventilation the ng tube gets crushed mm. or when we give pre- precedence to your ng tube there is a significant leak so in either case this is a 
uh, essential trade off between two things so what we have is an ng tube adapter so basically what it does is this is ng tube adapter color i think it it is not focusing if you have a background a black background yeah, yeah. then Night just give me a black background so i'm not sorry no 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 try out ha uh, this is the black background so this is ng tube this is ha uh, this is a port ha huh? now you can put another uh, tube will come out of this like this then huh? okay so 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 uh, so what we can do is we have three positions hmm. so when we talk about your niv mask we can place it over here hmm. here or at the bottom just show me the uh, some tubing actually this is not the ng tube ha huh, but just here. like means coming out like this then huh? it is coming from here yeah or here or from the bottom or from the bottom like this so what we can do is sir hmm. thinking uh, consider the uh, table as the patient's face hmm. so once we insert the tube hmm. Hmm. let's say like this reach out the thick hmm okay camera so yeah. we can put the niv mask it sir you can use show the yes this Did you can put out the face. Ah, you can yeah. strongly feel it. Yeah. Then, ah, so you can put here, and then on the cushion we can put it there. So the rise tube is coming from inside, and then through this uh, adapter, the RT is coming outside, and then on the bow you can turn it sideways. So it will, it is rise tube is not getting crushed, and also the seal is properly maintained. Right, sir. Yeah. okay so that's the way so this is a good thing we haven't used it but we'll try this right you know? yes. so i think these uh, answers most of the queries of those who are working in intensive care and emergency and if you have any further doubt you can ask in the comments or go to the website and ask in the forums so i again thank you abhishek gushal kapil nadim for this session so many thanks thank you sir many thanks for this and do read more about ni mask because most of the focus at times remains on the machine rather than on the basics of the mask which we are using and the attachments we are using if you have anything more interesting regarding this attachments you have come across do let us know in the comments thank you see you in the next video thank you thank you thank you, thank you.